and thank you for watching. On today's review, we're going to talk about the new Kenwood DDX350BT. So stay tuned. So as you know, Kenwood has Kenwood and they have Exelon. Yes. And they're two totally different lines for the, in the respect that the Exelon can only be gotten at an Exelon dealer mm -hmm. and like us and the other products can be gotten at a lot of other places. Correct. Well, the regular line has a few models that Exelon doesn't have. Okay. So what Kenwood has done is they've come out and gave us, the independent retailer that has Exelon, a few products that aren't going to be available in the regular Exelon line. There's going to be similar products, and that brings us to this guy right here. This is a DDX350BT. In the regular line, this is going to be called the DDX25BT. Okay. They're very similar radios, and they have very similar features. So if you have a DDX25BT, you can go ahead and watch this video because you're going to learn a lot about your radio. If you have a 350BT, then you have the same radio we have pictured here. Let's start talking about it, shall we? Okay. Let's open this thing up. So we have a wiring harness. Now Kenwood makes two wiring harnesses for their video head units. One has the emergency brake wire in the harness, and then there's the one like this that does not have the emergency brake in the harness, it's on the back of the radio. So if you have a Kenwood and would like to upgrade to this model, as long as your emergency brake and reverse wire are located on the physical radio themselves and not in the harness, you can upgrade with not having to switch anything. You get a Bluetooth microphone. Then you get an instruction manual. Now in the instruction manual is a bag of screws. It's an actual instruction manual. You get a warranty card and then there's three different manuals that in different languages that are available to you. So that's kind of nice. And then of course the radio is also in the box. We're going to go ahead and get this thing out of the bag, get it flipped around and let you guys take a look at the back. All right, so starting on this side, the first thing that we're gonna have is the AM FM antenna. We have our six channel, two volt output. At the top we have rear, the middle we have front, and the bottom we have sub. Coming over here we have two yellow RCAs. The bottom is the camera input, and the top is the video output. The Bluetooth mic is located here next to the heatsink. Below it we have the 2.0 USB, 5 volts, and 1.5 and amps of output. The light green wire is going to be the parking brake input, also known as the emergency brake in. Next to that we have a purple white, which is the reverse trigger. Then on the other side of the radio we have the main power input. Now we'll go ahead and flip this around and take a look at the front. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're getting for a radio. The screen is a 6.2 inch clear resistive WVGA LCD LED backlit touchscreen that is 800 by 480. It's a CD DVD player right here. This is your eject button. The glowing red Kenwood icon is your reset button. You also have the home power off button. So if you press and hold it, it'll go ahead and shut the radio off. Tap it again. It'll turn back on. Next, you have your menu camera button. So this will take you to the main menu screen, as well as if you hold it, it will launch the backup camera, which we'll show you a little bit more later. Your telephone slash voice prompt, volume up, volume down. Now when you first power up the radio, you're gonna have some choices. Demonstration on and off. Go ahead and turn that off, because you don't want the demo mode to be flashing all the time. Next is your language. Select enter. And here you have 21 different languages to choose from. Rear camera, select enter. This unit gives you the ability to turn on and off the camera interruption, which is going to be a positive trigger. You can have parking guidelines, so if your camera does not have parking guidelines, this will provide them for you. If you select adjust, you can adjust them. The controls across the bottom here allow you to do that. Initialize, if you press and hold for two seconds, will default it back to this factory. Otherwise, use the green buttons here to choose the line you'd like to adjust. Use the white buttons to actually move it. If you don't like what you've done, like I said, hold the initialize for two seconds. Next up is gonna be user customize, select enter. Here you have nine different displays available to you of course, that are slightly different colors and different images. You have a nice water. The default is a nice cityscape. 
cloudy and also you can import one of your own images so this allows you to have your own image as well when you're done select the back arrow next is view angle select enter view angle uses brightness contrast and black adjust to give you a brighter or darker screen depending on how you're viewing the radio for example as you can see it just got a little brighter a little less bright a little bit more bright depending on how you're looking at the screen will affect how bright this appears to you. Once you get all these set up, go ahead and select Finish. The radio is now set up and ready to play with. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your clock. When you're in the main menu view like this, tap the clock and you can come in and adjust it. You have Synchronize, which will allow you to use the RDS system or radio data system to automatically set the clock to a channel that is broadcasting RDS. However, if you can't find one in your area, simply leave it on off and just adjust the time here. Hit the back arrow when done. Let's take a look at the home screen and what we got going on here. We'll start with this side here. The nine button brings up your sources. You can page over, you can page back. This gives you all the sources that are available to you, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. It also gives you now playing and return to home. The gear, is where all your tools and settings are. First up is going to be audio, which we'll cover in a little bit. Display. Display allows you to go in and adjust the dimmer. User customize will take you back to those screens, so if you'd like to change them. Demonstration on and off, in case you forgot to turn that off. Toggle down. Home screen customize. This allows you to go in and adjust the layout of your home screen. Now this is important. These three icons across the bottom are going to be your main icons. These are your quick sources. Above them will be your secondary sources. So for example, if you don't have an iPod, there's no reason to have an iPod as your main source. You can toggle through until you get to something that you would be using. So if you're planning on using a thumb drive for audio, you may want to choose that. You can then come up and adjust these as well. So if you're going to be listening to CDs, you might want that as a secondary source. When you're done, select X. Next is screen adjust, select enter. If you'd like to manually adjust brightness and black level, you can do that here. You can also readjust your view angle in case you set that up wrong from the get-go. Input. Input is where you go to set up your rear view camera. So if you added a rear view camera after you've done the initial install, you're going to want to come here. Select enter and it'll take you to that main page that we were just on to where you can turn on and off your camera. You do have to turn this on if you add a camera, otherwise the radio will not know that you have a backup camera. And even if you hook up the purple white wire, it still will not activate until you turn this on. System. System is where the nuts and bolts of the radio are at. These are things that are not necessarily the most important things, but some of you might want to get in and adjust them. For example, language, you can adjust one of the 21 languages there. If you need to set your clock, other than doing it the simple way, you can do it here. Smartphone setup and Bluetooth setup. This is where you can manually adjust the phones that you've connected to the radio, which we'll get into more once we get to the Bluetooth portion. If you don't like the beep, you can turn the beep off here. Memory setup. Now, this has an extensive EQ sound package built into it, like I said we'll talk about in a little bit. Once you've set that up, you can come back here to set up memory and you can memorize those settings so that if the battery is disconnected, you can recall those settings so that all your hard work doesn't disappear. It's an amazing feature that I strongly recommend if you've taken the time to use the EQ you set up. The last thing you might be interested in is system information. System information is where you keep your version number, so if there's ever going to be a software update to check and see if you need one, it's going to be located in system information. So no radio would be complete without a bunch of sources, and this thing has a bunch of sources. Yes. It has a ton of them, so let's talk about them, shall we? Over here you see where it says standby. Go ahead and click the double arrow. If you notice, here's where those three icons appeared that we set up. Here's your thumb drive, your Bluetooth music, and your radio. We'll go ahead and tap radio. This has an AM FM radio with 15 FM presets and 6 AM presets. Remember when we talked about the menu function? We'll go ahead and hit menu. As you can see across the bottom, it brings up a different menu than what you've seen before. 
From here you can automatically access your Bluetooth phone. You can adjust the screen. You can turn the display off. So if you're driving at night and this is too bright, you could just turn it off altogether, tap it, and it'll come back on. Camera view. So if you'd like to view the camera while you're driving forward, you can do that. Simply tap the middle of the screen and it'll go away. You can also hold the menu button and that'll also bring up the camera. Tap the middle of the screen and it'll go away. Setup. This will take you directly to the setup page we were just on. And then current source, which was AM FM. Now we'll hit the home icon and it'll take us home. We'll select a nine key. It has, as we said already, it's a CD DVD player. It does have one USB jack on the back. The USB will read thumb drives encoded in FAT16 or FAT32 only. It'll read sound files that are MP3s, WMAs, AACs, WAV, or FLAC files. It'll also read video in the MPEG-1 or MPEG-2 format. And it'll read photos in the JPEG. The reason why it needs to read photos is so you can import your own background. It will also control an iPod or an iPhone, which is also known as AOA. We're gonna skip over Bluetooth real quick and we're gonna come down to the bottom here where we have iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, Android, and iPod. The reason why we're doing that is because they all set up very similar. Tap one, it's gonna take you to the smartphone setup page. Now from this page, it's you're going to set up the style phone you have and how you plan on listening to any one of those sources. They all basically will set up the same. The first thing it's gonna do is ask you what type of phone you have, iPod, iPhone, or Android, or other. So you'd select here, select change, and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna connect over Bluetooth for Android? Or if you select iPod, select change. Do you wanna use the one wire USB, or would you like to do everything over Bluetooth? Select next. It's gonna ask you what paired device you'd like to connect to. Go ahead and tap it, select okay, and now it will start playing one of those music sources. Now let's go ahead and talk about Bluetooth phone. That's for calling. If you notice across the top here, it has two phones listed. This particular device has dual phone pairing. And what that means is that two phones can be paired at the same time, and no matter which one is highlighted, if it gets an incoming call, it'll automatically switch to it. So for example, right now we're paired to Nando's phone. Mr. White is getting a phone call right now. So it automatically switched from Nando's phone to Mr. White. You see, you're wondering that's the store number there. That will automatically switch the hierarchy of Mr. White over to here and Nando to Mr. Two phone. Now let's go down here and let's look at the side. If you'll notice, the icon for contacts is not highlighted. And that is by choice. Out of default, when you pair to these radios, it does not automatically push over your contact. If you'd like to have your contacts pushed over, go into your phone's Bluetooth settings and select sync contacts. As you notice here, it's turned off. And that is by default from Kenwood. So what that means is that if you don't want your contacts pushed over on this because you don't want to know who's calling you, you don't have to. Keep in mind though, you won't be able to use the contacts feature built into the radio. You can still dial out old school or initiate the phone call from your phone and as soon as you hit call, the radio will automatically take over. Now if you do decide you do want the contacts and you've gone ahead and turned your contacts on on your phone, it will not automatically show them. What you need to do is select gears, select pair devices and enter, select the phone, select connection, disconnect the phone. Once it's disconnected, go ahead and turn it back on. And then when you cycle back through, and then when you tap this, your phone numbers will be there. Next, we'll go ahead and select Bluetooth audio. And the reason why we talked about Bluetooth phone separate from Bluetooth audio is because it's just that. They're two separate things. The phone has nothing to do with the audio. So you could have a phone or device that's paired into the Bluetooth audio that isn't even paired into the phone and still be listening to it, make and receive calls. Right here, you'll notice where it says Nando 13. If you tap that, you'll see how Mr. White and Nando 13 are both listed and there's three other spots available to you. You can fill those up with phones and actively switch between the phones here on the face of the radio or by simply selecting a song and pressing play on the phone. Tap the new phone, select X, it'll automatically switch over and change. 
Now, Mr. Nando will go ahead and select the song on his phone and press play. And as you can see, it automatically changed over to Nando 13. It's that simple. Bluetooth on this is pretty cool. Yes, it Very is. Very cool. So, and that's the primary function of this radio is going to be Bluetooth. I mean, that's why you're buying it is to do Bluetooth. It has an awesome Bluetooth. Correct. Now, you want your Bluetooth to sound good, right? Yes, definitely. You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, that's good because this one will let your Bluetooth sound amazing. Not only will let it sound amazing, there's a feature that we're going to talk about after we're done talking about the EQ that's even more fun. I know, it's like a tease. Let's take a look. If you select this icon right here, this is the EQ, and it will take you just to the EQ. Here you'll find your 13-band EQ. You'll find your seven presets, natural, rock, pop, easy, top 40, jazz, powerful, and then you have user settings that you can make your own. Down here it says EQ initial. This will set it back to the default setting. And then you have all source. And the reason why it says all source is this has what's called source tone adjust. This allows you to have a different EQ setting for each one of your sources. So if you'd like FM to sound different than your Bluetooth audio, you can do that by simply adjusting the EQ when you're on that source and it will stay there. Now, if you've just found one awesome EQ setting that you want to use all across the board, then select all sources and it will do that. It'll apply that EQ curve to all the sources. Now, to get into the actual full EQ, select your menu button, select setup, and then select audio here at the top. Here you'll see where it says EQ and if you tap it, it will take you to the same page we were just at. Select back. Now we bring to the sound effects, or what I like to call the fun page. This allows you to really have a good time and adjust your sound to make it sound significantly better or worse depending on how you use it. First up is loudness. Loudness is nice if you like to listen to music at a lower level and still want that impact to the music. You have off, low, and high settings for loudness. After that, you have bass boost. Bass boost is off or five different settings. What bass boost is used for is if you have music, let's say old 70s rock music that doesn't have a lot of strong deep bass to it, if you select bass boost, that'll go ahead and enhance those lower frequencies and make it sound more powerful. Be careful though, if you switch over to something that has a lot of bass, it will still try to do that and can damage your speakers. Drive EQ. Drive EQ is a feature built into the radio that tries to cancel loud car cabins caused by road noise. It's a special effect that may or may not work in your car, but give it a try, especially if you have a lot of wind noise coming in. It could help. Space Enhancer. Space Enhancer uses an internal DSP to make the sound bigger or smaller depending on which one you select. It can give you the illusion of a much bigger sound stage than you would normally get just by having it off. There again, it's something to play with and have a little fun. Supreme. Supreme is available to you on any source other than FM. And what Supreme does is improve sound loss from compression. So your MP3s or any of those compressed files that may sound bad, you can use Supreme to help. Realizer. Realizer is just like it sounds, real. It tries to help the music using DSP to sound more realistic. And you have several settings in it to allow you to do that. Stage EQ. Stage EQ uses a DSP to move sound up or down across the sound stage. So for example, if you get in your car and all the sound is playing low, you can hit this and it will move the sound stage up a little bit, hit it again, it'll move up a little bit more, hit it again, and it will move it up higher. This gives you the illusion of the sound up higher in your dash, which may give you a more pleasing or enjoyable sound. These are all fun to play with and do actually work really well, so I strongly recommend at least trying them out. Next up is good old balance and fader. It's just that simple. You can hit the arrows here, get them all out of whack, select center, and it'll put it right back in the center for you. Speaker and crossover. Now, the nice thing about Kenwood is they like to make these radios as difficult or as easy as you feel comfortable with. You can select the type of car you have from the drop down menu over here. You can come over here and select where the rear speakers are. Are they in the doors? Are they in the rear deck? 
you can select the speaker size. Tap on the front. What size speaker do you have on your door? A six and a half, five and a quarter? Maybe you have a six and three quarter, seven inch, four by six, five by seven, six by eight, or possibly a six by nine. Do you have some form of external tweeter? What size is a tweeter? Is it a big tweeter like a three and a half? Or is it a smaller tweeter like a little tiny one inch? Or is there no tweeter at all? You can do the same for rear with the exception of it has no tweeter and also the subwoofer. You can tell what size subwoofer you put in your car or if there's no subwoofer at all. You'll notice down here it says crossover. If you select crossover, this will take you into the advanced mode. This will allow you to go in and actually individually choose the frequencies you'd like to play the speakers at. And the reason why I asked about the tweeter is because this also has a low pass filter for the tweeter with volume control. So if your tweeters are just killing it or too bright, this will give you the ability to control that brightness. It also gives you independent level control for both right and left. So if the tweeter in front of the driver is too much, or all you hear is the one coming from the passenger side, you can adjust that tweeter volume here. Next is time alignment. Time alignment allows you to go in and tell it for one, where you're sitting, let's say the driver's front, and then go ahead and add in the footage your head is away from each speaker. It'll give you a default setting just so you can get an idea, but I strongly recommend going in with the tape measure and measuring it up. Once you've gone ahead and added the distance, if you need to, you can also go ahead and gain down some of those, kind of like the tweeter adjustment. You can reduce the volume on certain speakers to help that sound get to your head all at the same time. Select down. Lastly, we have volume offset. Volume offset allows you to adjust the individual levels for each source you're listening to. So for example, if you're listening to Bluetooth audio on a phone that really doesn't have a great Bluetooth audio output, and when you're switching between sources, that Bluetooth level seems very low. You can come in here and you can actually turn that up so that all your sources sound like they're playing at the same level. So there you go, there's lots of sound adjustments, lots of fun to be had there. Like I said, we have one cool feature that I wanted to talk about to wrap this up. And that is, today everyone does everything from their phone. And tapping through all those menus on there, that might be a little much. Wouldn't it be great if you could just control it from your phone? Yeah. Well, Kenwood makes a smart control app for your radio that you can download to your phone and then you just tap it. Now over here in the corner of the app is three little lines. Go ahead and tap those. And you have preferences, disconnect, receiver, and mode change. The one we're interested in is receiver. From here, you can select EQ. Here's all your preset EQ settings. Your users, so you can select powerful if you'd like. Now if you come over here and tap the EQ, as you can see, it's changing every time I touch it. Select back, then you go into your sound effects. Here's your loudness and your bass boost, balance and fader, as well as time alignment can be adjusted here. You can adjust distance as well as gain. You could do your speaker and subwoofer settings, so you can tell it what kind of cars you have, speakers, subwoofers. You can adjust the crossover simply by tapping the button, and you can adjust your subwoofer volume as well. Now I'll select switch modes, from here, you can control everything that's on the radio. So remember those five Bluetooth phones you compare to it? Well, the vehicle could be sitting over there, and you could have the phone here, and you can adjust your volume. You can change tracks. You can do all that right from the phone. So you can tap volume up here. As you can see down here, the volume is changing. We'll exit out of this guy here. We'll select the next track. Down across the bottom here, you can change your sources to any source that's available. If you want to turn it off, you can turn it off. You can come over here and select FM if you want to listen to the radio. So from your phone, you can do a whole heck of a lot of stuff that is right at the palm of your hand. So there again, if, you're, if your car is over there and you want to control it, all you need is your phone now and you can do that as long as you're within range of Bluetooth, which is, well, you know, it's about 20 feet, maybe. 15, 20 So, I mean, yeah. don't plan on being like half mile down the road and controlling it. <laughs> but it allows you to have some control for those five phones that are paired to your radio. Now, this feature isn't only exclusive to this style radio, but it's a feature that's built into this. So, way to go, Kenwood. Now, there's one last thing. 
I know, right? One last thing that we want to show you before we let you go. And that has to do with using this radio in countries other than the United States. And that is because Kenwood allows you to have multiple tuners built into the radio. Now, I know a lot of people out there don't know that depending on what country you live in, the FM is actually different. This radio will allow you to switch where you live so that you can have the proper FM reception. We're going to show you real quick how to do that. Now what you want to do is take the home button and the menu button and press them both at the same time. While you're doing that, you're going to have someone press the reset button. Now don't let go. Keep holding them. The unit will restart and it'll give you the option to select North America, South America, or Europe. Select the region you'd like and then select finish. So if you're in the States and you decide that you see one of these and you have to have it, no problem. Pick it up, you can take it home with you. Yes, definitely. Pretty cool. Now, that is a feature that most Kenwoods do have that a lot of people don't know about. So it's not exclusive just to this radio either, but just letting you know. All right, that is a ton of stuff in the little box. That is for sure. <sighs> All right, Fernando. All right. End the show for me. So if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, you know where you find us. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, also in Twitter. If you want to sponsor the show, you can also find us over on Patreon. And with that, guys, we're going to wish you a good night, and we'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.